You are holy, holy God, holy God. Yes, you are holy God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Father, we put this day in your hand. We thank you, Lord, that you are able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we can ever think or ask of you, God. Thank you for these wonderful saints that you put in this class today, Lord. And you've given us some things to say and some ideas and some thoughts. But, Lord, it's from the heart that we that we love you. It's from the heart that we have a relationship with you, Lord. So let everything come down into the heart and into the bone and into the marrow. And let it make us into who God desires us to be, Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. I pray against every hurt and pain that has come against us, Lord. Amen. The rejection of men and women that have come against us, Lord. The things and the ideas and the thoughts that have caused us pain and struggle and trial and, and everything that is evil has come against us, Lord. I pray in the name of Jesus that you would help us to move forward and not backwards. I pray that you would help us to put on the whole armor of God, Lord. As a matter of fact, I, I pray that you would help us to make that decision right now to put on the whole armor of God. That we would put it on right now, Lord. That we no longer would walk in our failures and in our troubles and in our pain and in our anguish. But we would say, I put that all off in the name of Jesus. I carry a new thing. I walk in a new way. I talk in a new way. I'm new every day in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, there's some heaviness that has been placed on your people that is not according to your will and your purpose. And I pray against that today in the name of Jesus. I pray that you would loose them and set them free from that, Lord, in the mighty name of the Lord. Hallelujah. And that they no longer would be under the heaviness of this time and this season in life, God. Hallelujah. All that the enemy is screaming and hollering and saying, Who is he, Lord, that he would say anything at all and not have a covenant with you, Lord? Ha <laughs> ha, we've got a covenant with the living God. We've got a covenant with Jesus Christ. We no longer have to live according to the world and the things of this world. The world is passing away, but we are forever. We are the King of King and the Lord of Lords' children. Hallelujah. We don't have to walk under all that stuff, Lord. Hallelujah. We will not walk under all that stuff. We will not live under all that in the name of Jesus. We will walk by faith and not by sight. Hallelujah. Well, I've made up my mind. Amen. I've had a talk with Jesus. I've made up my mind. I'm going to live for God. Amen. I've made up my mind. There's nothing can stop me now. Hallelujah. I'm going in. If the devil doesn't like it, he can sit on attack. Hallelujah. I am who the Lord says I am. I am his chosen. I am his beloved. I have been called. I have been set apart. I have been uh, chosen by God to do things for him, through him, in him. And there's no one that can stop us. There's no one that can keep us. There's no one that can hold us back. For it is God that has given us the, the perfect right and privilege in his son Jesus. Oh, the veil is torn from the top all the way to the bottom. Indicating that you and I can go right into the place where God dwells. Hallelujah. So the enemy has no tactics. He has no rights. He has no control over us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. What a mighty God we serve. Amen. He's worthy to be exalted. Someone say he's worthy. He is the Lord of lords and the King of kings. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Well, yesterday I said, Lord, what do you, what do you want to say to the people today? And he said, I want you to talk about living like Jesus. Amen. You know, uh, when you live like the Lord, guess what comes your way? Uh, a cross. Hallelujah. Amen. When you live like the Lord, guess you all kinds of misunderstanding, all kinds of trouble, all kinds of pain. Amen. Hallelujah. But guess what? When the time comes, amen, there's a God that raises you right up out of the water. Hallelujah. And sends a voice from heaven and says, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Amen. Hallelujah. 
So how many of you know there's, there's nothing like living like Jesus? Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. He's the author and the finisher of our faith. Hallelujah. How many of you are glad he's an author and a finisher of my faith? Hallelujah. It ain't the past. It's where I'm going. Amen. Anybody going somewhere today? Hallelujah. Woo. I think he said, I hasn't seen nor ear heard all the plans I have for those who love me, for those who are called according to my purpose. Amen. Amen. Anybody in here ready? Amen. Ah, anybody in here looking up? And not down. Hallelujah. Hey, anybody in here got some things that they know God's going to do in and through and for them? Hallelujah. You know, uh, uh, somebody bought me some wonderful cologne. Amen. And I've got all the cologne I need. But this, they brought me some new cologne. Amen. And so uh, it was put in a drawer where I couldn't find it. Amen. And uh, I went and found it. Hallelujah. And I got that cologne out. And I put it on this morning. Hallelujah. Amen. I didn't want my old cologne. I'm not going to set the new stuff over in a drawer. Hallelujah. And leave the new stuff in a drawer for years and never use the new stuff. I'm going to get the new stuff out and use it first. Hallelujah. Woo. Amen. How many of you going to get the new stuff out? Praise God. Hallelujah. I want new. How about you? Amen. So living like Jesus, Matthew 3, 13 through 17. Then Jesus came from, and we have uh, outlines, anybody who would like one. Uh, Larry, if, you, if they would raise their hand, anybody that wants an outline. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. They're sitting right there, Larry. Amen. So Matthew 3, 13 through 17. Then Jesus came from Galilee to Jordan to John to be baptized by him. Hallelujah. Now, John the Baptist was, uh, was uh, the one who Elizabeth had uh, brought forth. It's the one that uh, in the temple, whenever, the, whenever the, his dad in the temple uh, didn't believe God, he became where he couldn't talk. Amen. And so finally they asked him who he's supposed to be. And they said, he'll be John. Amen. And he was baptized with the Holy Spirit from the time he was young. And then he went into the finest hotels and, and he stayed at the finest hotels. Amen. And he ate at the finest restaurants and, and he was a rich man and he wore rich clothes. And <laughs> how many of you know? Uh, he was baptized in the Holy Ghost, amen? So guess where he was? He was out in the wilderness, amen? And guess what he wore? Clothes that were rattly, amen? Clothes that were old, hallelujah. But he was one of the greatest prophets ever, ever to walk on the face of this earth, amen? God had chosen him from his birth and told him that he was to be uh, separated unto God. And so he was preaching in the wilderness and men and women were going out to him. And he was becoming very uh, great in the sight of men. Hallelujah. As a matter of fact, he was the one that was bringing forth the coming of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So then Jesus came from Galilee to Jordan to John to be baptized of him. Hallelujah. Now, John could have been the kind of individual that could have said, you know, I'm a pretty big guy here. You know, I'm pretty, I, you know, a lot of men and women are following me. I, I don't know who this Jesus thinks he is, but he's taking some of my glory. Amen. And I don't appreciate him. Amen. How many of you know that's not the way men act whenever they're full of the power and the glory and the majesty of God? Amen. Amen. So John said, uh, there we go. I'll figure this. I got this new mouse. Amen. John would have prevented him saying, I need to be baptized of you. And do you come to me? You know, John forbade Jesus just like Peter did when Jesus went about to wash his feet. John's modesty thinks this an honor too great for him to receive, and he expresses himself to Christ, just as John's mother had done to Christ's mother uh, in Luke 4, 1, 43, winced. He says, whence is this to me that my mother, that the mother of the Lord should come to me? John, having great reputation, 
amongst the people was not proud and arrogant. He still held his humility. Amen. Amen. So Jesus come and Jesus said, I need you to baptize me. How many of you know Jesus did not need to be baptized? Jesus was not a sinner. Hallelujah. And baptism was for the remission of sins. Uh, uh, whenever, uh, Baptist, whenever John the Baptist went out, he said, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Amen. So the truth is, is that the reason Jesus had to be baptized was because he came to fulfill the law. Amen. He came to take the place of you and I concerning sin. Amen. So he had to be baptized for that. Praise the Lord. So he's telling John, he's saying, John, you need to, you need to go with this. You need to let this happen. Amen. And, and John is, is humble. Now, at first he wasn't humble. How many of you know there is a humility that, that we act like that we're humble, but we really aren't? Amen. We're really looking to honor someone so that we might gain power and position. You know what I mean? And we act humbly, but we really aren't humbling. We're just wanting to uh, kiss up to somebody and get something from them. Amen. Hallelujah. But John now, he, he realizes and he says, this is the Lord and I need to let him uh, uh, do what God needs to do. Amen. So John wants uh, Jesus to baptize him. John thinks it's necessary that he should, ba that he should be baptized of Christ. And how many of you know he is? He should be baptized by Christ. And the truth is, John is not uh, anything concerning the Lord. Amen? Like the Lord. John is not anything whenever you compare John to Jesus. Jesus is far greater, far more. Hallelujah. And yet he says, I need you to baptize me. Note, the purest of souls are most sensible of their own remaining impurity and seek most earnestly, earnestly for spiritual washing. In other words, no matter how big we get in our britches, amen, hallelujah, we stay humble, okay? So if, if God starts to pour it out on you and give you blessings and, and, and give you uh, power and give you position and, and give you authority and give you things like he did John the Baptist, you got to stay humble, amen? Amen. You got to make sure humility is your your uh, your uh, driving force. Amen. Hallelujah. How many of you want God to get the glory and not you? Amen. How many of you want the Lord to be exalted and not yourself? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. If it isn't for God's glory, it's vain. Amen. So John realized his his remaining impurity. Uh, and seek most earnestly for spiritual washing. Amen. How many of you are glad to have the word of God that washes you and purifies you day by day? Amen. How many of you need that cleansing power of God? How many of you love the power of the spirit to get on you and to change your mind and to turn you from your wicked ways? Amen. Hallelujah. He said, I'm not going to leave you comforted. I'm going to comfort lust. I'm going to send you the Holy Ghost. Amen. So he sends you the spirit of the living God. Amen. Praise the Lord. And we continue. Any, any man or woman who knows who their God is, is continually walking before God, knowing that they're unworthy. Amen. Uh, my worthiness only comes because of the cross of Jesus Christ and what he did for me on that cross. Amen. In other words, I, I now uh, we're supposed to live the law. Hallelujah. In other words, the law has not been done away with. Amen. I'm not justified by the law anymore, but I'm supposed to live by the law. And as a matter of fact, I'm supposed to live not only by the law, but more than the law. Hallelujah. In other words, the law said, thou shalt not kill. Jesus said, if you lust after, a, uh, uh, Jesus said, if you have hatred in your heart towards your brother, you've killed him already. Hallelujah. So just because the law is no longer against us doesn't mean that we no longer live by the law. Hallelujah. In other words, I am supposed to do everything the law tells me to do and then some, but I don't justify myself before God. Amen. Amen. In other words, if I fulfill every aspect of the law that I know to fulfill, I still, I still fall short of the glory of God. Amen. I'm not justified before God because of the law. I'm justified before God because of grace through faith. And that's not of myself. It's a free gift of God. But that doesn't keep us from trying to live according to the law. 
Amen. Hallelujah. We're supposed to have moral standards as Christians. And if we use grace and we use faith in order for us to live any way we want to live, the Bible says you're foolish and you're going to reap what you sow. Hallelujah. So you got to let God change you. You can't just live any way you want to live. So John realized how much he needs God. Amen. Hallelujah. So he has a need to be baptized of Christ. Note, the best and holiest men have need of Christ. And the better they are, the more they see that need. Amen. In other words, I'm 35 years in the kingdom. Amen. And I know I need him more now than I've ever needed him before. Amen. Hallelujah. Because I can use his grace to do whatever I want to do. Hallelujah. And God said, no, I didn't give you grace for that. I gave you grace to live the way I desire you to live, a holy and pure life, sanctified unto me, set apart from me, doing what I desire and not doing your own will and not doing your own thing. Amen. Hallelujah. So this was said before the multitude who esteemed John very highly and were ready to embrace him as the Messiah. Yet publicly, John owns that he had need of Jesus to baptize him. Okay, so John is not going, hey, everyone, look at me. I'm baptizing Jesus. Amen. No, he's looking at Jesus and saying to Jesus, I'm not even worthy for you to baptize me. Amen. I am a sinner saved by grace. Hallelujah. In other words, I need you, Jesus. I'm not better than anyone else. No one is. I don't stand before this group and, and, and give credit and glory to what I'm doing or what I'm saying. Every good and perfect gift comes from the Father above in whom there's no variance or shadow of turning whatsoever. So if I'm doing something good, I'm not doing it of my own uh, power and of my own strength. I'm doing it because I have a God in me that has made me a uh, uh, burned down inside to be that holy church purged in the vine ready to do the will and the purpose of my god amen? amen hallelujah hallelujah all things are possible to those who believe amen, amen. anybody in here believe amen. no no shame to the greatest of men who confess that they are undone without christ and his grace amen john was christ's forerunner and, and yet owns that he had need to be baptized of him. Even they who were born before Christ in time depended on him, received from him, and had an eye to him. Amen. While John was dealing with others about, the, about their souls, observe how, feeling, how feelingly he speaks of the case of his own soul. I have need to be baptized of thee. Hallelujah. So even though he's out there telling everybody they need to live right, amen, whenever he stands before the Lord, he says, I need you to be the one that makes me right. Amen? amen. Hallelujah. How many of you know, apart from Jesus, you can do what? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Say it again, y'all. <laughs> amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many of you enjoying this so far? Come on. What a mighty God we serve. Amen. I'm telling you that no one can talk like God. And his word is stronger than any two-edged sword. Amen. It cuts and divides asunder into the bone and into the marrow and accomplishes everything God desires for it to accomplish. Amen. And he's looking for some men and women who desire and want nothing more than to see him glorified and to see him magnified and lay down their lives for the living God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, ministers who preach to others and baptize others need to realize they also preach to themselves. Amen. Take heed to thyself first and save thyself. In other words, I better get myself right yeah. because I can tell you all kinds of good things, but I'm going to stand before Jesus all by myself. Yeah. Hallelujah. I got to get him an account for who I am in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Just like you do. Praise the Lord. So anytime we think we're something because we're doing something for God, hallelujah, and we think that's going to get us somewhere when we stand before Jesus, and maybe, you know, that's not going to get us nowhere. Amen. Uh, the Bible says uh, being a servant of the living God and you get done, uh, you get done doing what you're supposed to do. And then you sit down in, in the, in the living room of your master. Amen. 
Does your master say, kick up your feet, amen? Or does your master say, go get me something to eat? Hallelujah. So once you've done what you're supposed to do, you've only done what you're supposed to do. Don't act like that you're something when you're nothing. Amen. Hallelujah. Keep on trucking, baby. Amen. Got to keep on trucking. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So take heed to thyself. First Timothy four. Keep a close watch on yourself and on the teaching. Persi uh, persist in this. For by doing so, you will save both yourself and the hearers. Amen. So in other words, we're not supposed to just save the people. We're supposed to save ourselves. I, I, I can't be someone that's just a hearer of the word and not a doer of the word. Amen. James says it's like a man that looks in a mirror at himself and sees he's all messed up and he don't do nothing about it. Hallelujah. I got a mirror in the basement so I can trim up my beard. Hallelujah. How's it look today? <laughs> thank you lord amen hey but i couldn't see everything amen so my wife noticed that there's a little spot in between here and so she got a little razor and cut that little spot right up between my ears amen hallelujah guess what jesus is like my wife he said he said look there's a little spot right there amen there's a little something right there that just don't quite look right amen let me do something there. Amen. Hallelujah. Let me cut that. Let me make that better. Hallelujah. Let me make you look a little bit sharper right here because I love you very much. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. How many of you know my, life, my wife? I'm fortunate. My wife loves me. Yeah. Hallelujah. And she cares about me. And she cares enough to go get a razor and cut that, that ugly spot out in between my nose. Come on. <laughs> and Jesus. And Jesus is that kind of God. Amen. He loves you and he's not wanting to hurt you. He's wanting to make you look good. Amen. How many of you want to look good? Amen. Hallelujah. Not by man's standards, but by God's standards. You know, John the Baptist looked, looked a fit out there. Hallelujah. John the Baptist was all messed up. Amen. His hair probably, what did he say? He ate uh, locusts and honey. Yeah. Amen. How many of you know, he probably was not the best looking kept guy hallelujah as a matter of fact he said if you're looking for someone amen that uh, is like john don't go look in the king's house because he don't wear that kind of clothes amen he don't wear those soft raiment amen hallelujah i think it was camel skin or something like that he he wore hallelujah so this man who's out in the wilderness who's being used mightily by god and jesus comes up to him and he says i have need that you would baptize me amen you know as soon as ever christ began to preach he preached humility he preached it by his example preached it to all especially to the young ministers Christ was designed for the highest honors, yet in his first step, he thus abases himself. Amen? So the first step Jesus takes is to be baptized. Amen? To humble himself and allow someone else to baptize him as an open uh, uh, example that he is dying for the sins of the world. Amen? Hallelujah. So in other words, he was, it was us that went down with him in the water. Amen. It was us that came back up. And this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Amen. He paid the entire price for you and I. Amen. He did it all for us. Amen. He didn't have to be baptized. The picture of his baptism is for us. Hallelujah. We have to be baptized. We have to have the purification of the spirit and the, and the, and the, and the, and the washing of the water of the word and the, and the savior to come in and make us new. Hallelujah. He didn't need any of that. Praise the Lord. But that was his first act as, as a minister, hallelujah, was to humble himself. And how many of you know that's a picture that we need to look at in our lives as we serve God. We shouldn't start acting like we're something when we're nothing. Amen. Hallelujah. No, those who would ri raise high must begin low. Those who would rise high must begin low. Before honor is humility. It was a great price, a great piece of respect done to John for Christ thus to come to him. Amen. 
Notice Jesus didn't go to the, to the finest hotels in Jerusalem. Amen. He didn't go to the rich rulers in Jerusalem in order to honor them. Hallelujah. Uh, he, didn't, he didn't go to the places that a lot of people think they're getting respect. Amen. Hallelujah. A lot of people think you're getting respect because you drive around in some big fancy vehicle. Hallelujah. Or you run around with people that got money. Amen. Uh, Jesus honored. He didn't honor the one who was running around driving the best vehicle, who was running around with soft clothes. He honored the one that was out in the wilderness saying, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Hallelujah. The one who was preparing a way for the Lord. Hallelujah. He honored him. Amen. Amen. How many of you want to be honored by God? Amen. Praise the Lord. Be about the words, be about the business of God. Amen. Be doing what God wants you to do. Hallelujah. Stop worrying about yourself. Amen. How many of you know we can get so carried away in how we feel and how we think and everything that's going on and, and how much trouble I've got? Amen. How many of you know today is a new day? Yeah. Praise the Lord. I don't have to walk in all that anymore. I got something to do for Jesus. I'm breathing. Anybody in here breathing? Amen. Take a deep, deep breath. Hallelujah. Guess who gave that to you? You didn't get that on your own. Hallelujah. So it was there for a reason. Amen. And the reason is to give God the glory and to give God the honor and to be like John. Hallelujah. And to live in humility. Hallelujah. Not to live in the luxury of this world, but to live as a man and woman who have found a treasure and who have given everything they have that they might possess that field. Amen. They've sold everything they have. They've given up everything they have. They're living for God with everything they have. Hallelujah. They don't live themselves anymore. It's no longer I that liveth, but it's Christ Jesus that lives in me the hope of glory amen? amen and then you'll see god come and give you respect hallelujah amen he'll walk in and say that's my beloved right there look at john hallelujah i'm coming to him for him to baptize me hallelujah amen. praise the lord those that honor god he will honor now now here we have jesus fulfills all righteousness amen Verse 15, but Jesus answered him, let it be so now for thus it is fulfilling. It is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. Amen. Then he cons then he consented. In other words, John heard Jesus and, and heard what Jesus had to say. And he consented. Now, Christ insisted upon it. It must be so now. He does not deny that John had need to be baptized of him yet. Yet. He will now be baptized by John. Let it be so. Suffer it to be so now. Hallelujah. How many of you know whenever Jesus is saying something, he is saying it in order for him to fulfill the will of the one that sent him. Amen. Uh, whenever Jesus was asked who he was by Timothy or ask a, a questions, amen, he said, I and my father are one. In John, it talks about my father and I are one. If you look at me, you've seen my father. Hallelujah. It said the devil comes and he tries to find something in me. He can't find anything in me because everything I do, I do for my father, which is in heaven. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. So uh, whenever Jesus said, let it be so, he was saying that because Jesus was going to fulfill all righteousness. How many of you know he was the lamb without spot or blemish? He was the one that gave of himself for the sins of men. Hallelujah. And he had to fulfill every aspect of righteousness. So this was one of those things he had to do. Amen. Christ is now in a state of humiliation. Of, of hum, humiliation. Amen. Humbleization. How do you read it? Humiliation. humiliation. Amen. He has emptied himself. And made himself of no reputation. How many of you <laughs> uh, think that if you were God and you had all the power on the face of this earth and everything was in your power and in your strength, that what you would do would be humble yourself and go allow somebody to baptize you? Amen. That'd be the last thing on earth. If I had all the power on earth, amen, I could do anything I wanted to do. Are you kidding? I'd take my enemies and put them out in front of me and say, who do you think you are? Amen. How many of you know that's the nature of human beings? 
But Jesus, who was God himself and was 100% man, he said, I'm not going to live for myself. I'm going to live for the one who sent me, my father, which is in heaven. Hallelujah. And he humbled himself. And he began his, his, his humble life, amen, and his humble ministry he began in this baptism, amen, and he made himself of no reputation. He is not only found in fashion as a man, but is made in the likeness of sinful flesh, and therefore now let him be baptized of John, as if he needed to be washed, though perfectly pure, and thus... He was made sin for us, though he knew no sin. Hallelujah. Jesus came to fulfill the law and to become the spotless lamb, praying for the sins of the world. Hallelujah. You're not. No, I, I, I want anybody. I, this is just this is a time where everybody should not even hesitate to. Say what you need to say and, and be a part. This is a class. In the past, I learned a great uh, truth from this story of John the Baptist. Yeah. Uh, I can't remember who brought it up to my attention, but in here, it, it, it's, in, it's in here in John 3 30 is the verse. Mm -hmm. And the background is this, this is John the Baptist, you know, uh, baptizing Jesus and everything. And some of the disciples came and they, they asked, uh, you know, John, they go, whoa. Everybody's starting to follow him now. You know, they're not following you. No, they're not coming to you no more. And, Jesus, and John says, that's true. That's the way it should be. He goes, he must increase, but I must decrease. Yes. Everybody know that. But now if you apply that to yourself. Yes. In your life, in your walk with Jesus Christ, you, your flesh, must decrease. Yes. And you, Jesus, must increase. Yes. And yes. A great, a great truth from this story. Yes. 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 And if we if we if we apply that principle to our lives, then he's going to come and show up and 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 acknowledge that we're his. Hallelujah. I mean, he's going to love us anyway, but he's going to actually come to us like he did to John the Baptist and show out. Hallelujah. How many of you know he honored John the Baptist by coming to him and saying, uh, will you baptize me? Amen. He said, what you're doing, John, is right. Hallelujah. And I want to be a part of it. Amen. How many, of you, how many of you want God to be in what you're doing, through what you're doing, the whole intent of everything that you're doing? Amen. John the Baptist was right in line with God. Hallelujah. And we can be right in line with God also. Hallelujah. If we keep that same kind of attitude. Amen. Hallelujah. That says, I'm not worthy to even unloose your, uh, the, the, the shoes on your feet. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. But how many of you know God is who he says he is? Amen? Amen. So Jesus came to fulfill the law and to become that spotless lamb, praying for the, the sins of the world. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. Praise God. So uh, I guess we need a, need a, there'll be, a, she'll find one, I'm sure. Amen? First Peter 1, 18 and 19. Knowing that you were raised from the fruitful ways inherited from your forefathers, not with perishable things such as silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without spot or blemish. Amen. So how many of you know we were raised not by corruptible things, but we were raised by Jesus. Amen. The author and finisher of our faith. Hallelujah. And so you need to know if he's humble and he acts uh, in humility and his first act is of humility, how much more should we be humble? Hallelujah. How much more should we say, Lord, I'm not even worthy to, to I'm not worthy to even come into the house of God today. Amen. Some of us come into the house of God with arrogance. Some of us come into the house of God and they say, well, you know, I don't like the way they did this and I don't like the way they do this and that's not right and that's not good and look at that. And, and instead, they ought to come in the doors and say, Lord, if it had not been for you, if it had not been for what you did, I could not have possibly come into the house today. Amen. Amen. So Lord, thank you. 
Thank you for allowing me to come into your house today. Help me to never have a critical spirit about anything, but let me have a spirit of humility and be thankful that I have the right and the privilege to come and be amongst your saints today. Hallelujah. And then go about into the house, encouraging and lifting up and strengthening. Hallelujah. And letting people know they're going to make it. Hallelujah. God's got them. Amen. Hallelujah. How many of you know, you had, God has not left you. He has not forsaken you. He's the same today, yesterday, and forever. Hallelujah. Ha -ha. He's not weak concerning his children, but strong and mighty and tearing every stronghold of the enemy down. Amen. No weapon that's formed against you can prosper. Isn't that good news? All the promises in Jesus are yea, and all the promise are amen to our Father's glory, which is in heaven. Amen? And all that was bought for us by the precious blood of Jesus. Amen? Hallelujah. I mean, you know, he didn't just humble himself at the beginning of his ministry. He lived on this earth humbly. Hallelujah. Amen? Uh, he fought the enemy. He fought the devil of his soul. Amen? And right after he gets baptized, we're going to see that, the, that he didn't go into Jerusalem to the finest hotel. Hallelujah. And he didn't have a big old uh, group of people that stood out on a bow. He stood out on a balcony and all the people on the, on the, uh, in the square was going, yay. Hallelujah. No, we're going to find out as soon as he was baptized, as soon as God gave him uh, the, the honor, do his glory and his majesty. As, how many of you know, as soon as God gives you something, the enemy's going to attack you. Yes. Yeah. Amen. You're going to get tried. Hallelujah. How many of you have been since you've been in the kingdom? Yes. Yes. Come on. Just take a step toward God. Yes. Take a step toward. Let God come into your heart. Let God change you and transform you and see what happens. Amen. Hallelujah. Your family, your whole family might turn against you. Amen. Hallelujah. So it was with the precious blood of Jesus. Amen. Jesus declared by heaven. Amen. How many of you know? Jesus was the son of God. Jesus was the first begotten of God. Hallelujah. He's the preeminent one of God. Hallelujah. So now he's going to be baptized and God himself from heaven is going to shout it out. This is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Amen. 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 Verse 16. And when Jesus was baptized, immediately he went up from the water. Hallelujah. Now, I believe he was just risen up like this. I think he was, lay, he was flat. Hallelujah. And he came right up out of the water. That's the way I picture it. You can picture it any way you want. Amen. Hallelujah. He could have just come right back up. You know what I mean? You know, you get baptized and then you come right back up. Hallelujah. But it says he went up from the water. So I feel like he was separated from the water. Amen. And behold, the heavens were opened to him. And he saw the spirit of God descending like a dove and coming to rest upon him. Hallelujah. Now, why do you think the spirit would be resting on Jesus? Amen. How many of you know it's not by power? It's not by might. It's by the spirit. Hallelujah. So, God himself, the man, God, had to have the spirit. Amen? I mean, you know, apart from the spirit, you ain't going to get it done. Praise the Lord. Uh, it's no coincidence that the dove came down like a spirit upon Jesus. Because how many of you know, this is an example of what needs to happen. How many of you are requesting of God the spirit to come and to continue to pour into you? Amen. You know, the spirit is not just one incident. Hallelujah. Uh, the spirit comes on us when we're saved and, the, and then we can be baptized in the Holy Ghost. But we're not supposed to just rest in that. Amen. The Holy Spirit is progressive. So you're supposed to be seeking the spirit continually. Amen. You're supposed to be saying, come on, God, who pour it out on me. Amen. Uh, let me not live by my own strength by my own uh, spirit, but come into me, Holy Spirit. Guide me, Holy Spirit. Direct me, Holy See how it makes you move? See how the Holy Spirit makes you different than you was before? Hallelujah. I can move better in the Holy Spirit than I can anywhere else or anything else on this earth. Hallelujah. And the more I get of the Holy Spirit, the more I can accomplish for God. Amen. 
So he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and coming and resting on him. And behold, a voice from heaven said, This is my beloved Son with whom I am well pleased. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. So God the Father was well pleased with Jesus. Amen? He was pleased with him before he ever did anything. Amen? Hallelujah. How many of you know Jesus was born of a virgin, amen? And how was she born of that virgin? By the Spirit. Why is that? Why is the Spirit involved? Why does God continue involve the Spirit? Because the Spirit is a very uh, necessary aspect of every part of our relationship with God. Amen? Yeah. Hallelujah. You want more of God, ask for more of the Spirit. Amen? You want more power to be a witness for God, ask for more of the Spirit. Amen? You want to live more for God, ask for more of the Spirit. Hallelujah? Uh, don't go to God all the time and saying, you know, I'm sorry this is going on. Amen? Go to God and say, hallelujah. I'm only going to live once. And it's all about you, Lord, coming and giving me the power to live for you and to do things for you. Hallelujah. It's not about my life and what's going on in my life. You'll take care of that. You said it. You said, look at the lilies of the field uh, here today and burnt tomorrow and how beautiful they are. Does God not care more for us than the lilies of the field? He said, look at the sparrow. You know, not one of them drops onto the ground that my father doesn't know it. Amen. How, how, how come we're always worried about us and what's going on with us how about if we put that in the hands of God and let the spirit of God come and change us and transform us and make us into the glory and the majesty and the power and the might of the living God hallelujah and start to walk in the goodness and the mercy and the newness of life that God intends for us to walk in hallelujah hallelujah old things have passed away behold all things have become new Amen. How many of you know Jesus received the Spirit? Amen. And when he received the Spirit and heard that voice, well done, my beloved son, or, or uh, I, 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 I am well pleased with you. Hallelujah. How many of you know that lifted him up? That gave him a uh, 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 great uh, help. And helped him to know who he was as a man. Because he was 100% man too. Amen. I mean, no man does not live by bread alone. But by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Amen. So he heard that. He said, this is my beloved son. How many of you know? Uh, he was well loved. As a matter of fact, the heavens and the earth and everything that is in them were made for him. By him, through him, and in him. Amen. And he is seated at the right hand of the Father in heaven. Amen. There's no one that God honors any more than he does Jesus. Amen. There's no one more honored in heaven and earth than Jesus the man. Hallelujah. He is seated at the right hand of God until he makes his enemies his footstool. Hallelujah. And one of these days there's going to be a new kingdom. Amen. Hallelujah. One of these days, there's going to be a city that's going to come down from God whose builder and maker is God. Hallelujah. And nothing that offends is going to go into that city. Amen. And it will be a streets of gold. Hallelujah. And there will be pearls and all kinds of things that have decorated. And he prepares a place for us before the foundation of the world that where he is, there you and I might be. Amen. How many of you want to be with him? Praise the Lord. There ain't nothing like being with Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. The time when it happened, then there was an emphasis laid on upon that immediately after the heavens were opened to him, the Holy Spirit manifest himself in the likeness of a dove. But God, the father, by a voice, for when the law was given, they saw no manner of similitude. Only they heard a voice. Amen. Amen. Deuteronomy 4.12. And so this gospel came, and the gospel indeed it is, the best news that ever came from heaven to earth. For it spoke plainly. Are we still displaying? Yep. Thank you. For it spoke plainly and fully God's favor to Christ and 
us in him. Hallelujah. So whenever this statement was made, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. He was not only talking to Jesus. Hallelujah. He was not only talking about Jesus. He was talking about everyone who lives in him. Amen. How many of you are his beloved son today? Hallelujah. How many of you beloved son, beloved daughter? Hallelujah. That's our great hope. Amen. That's how, we, that's how we live. That's how we breathe. I'm the child of God. Amen. I'm his beloved. He loves me. He cares deeply about every aspect of me. Amen. And how many of you know the devil wants to try and get you not to believe that? Hallelujah. How many of you failed this week? How many of you, because of your failures, sometimes the enemy tells you, you failed. God don't love you no more. Hallelujah. I mean, you know, that's a lie. Uh, guess who succeeded? His name was Jesus. Hallelujah. Guess what he did? Hallelujah. He paid it all. Amen. Praise God. He was obedient even under the death of the cross. And because he was humi because he was humiliated, because he humbled himself, because he became obedient unto the death of the cross, you and I are children of the living God accepted in the beloved. Hallelujah. I'm accepted. How about you? Amen. I'm 100% right before God right now before you. Hallelujah. How about you? Anybody in here 100% right before God? You may not feel like it. Hallelujah. How many of you know it's not how we feel? It's faith. How many of you believe faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen? Amen. Hallelujah. But that voice came from heaven and said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Amen. Hallelujah. So, uh, something happened here. Let me go back and figure out what's going on. There we go. Hopefully we'll be able to find it again. Does anybody know which number we were on? 17. First Peter. Oh, he was declared by heaven. That was where we were at, wasn't it? Time had happened. Number three. So we're on three now, right? Sorry about that. Sometimes these machines don't do quite right. Hallelujah. Declared by heaven. And then we're on number three. There we go. Now what happened? <laughs> He fulfills all righteousness. I, uh, I ask for your uh, patience. Thank you. Oh, now it's going to do it again. Okay. Well, we might have to get smaller on the screen. I'm sorry about that. I'll figure it out. And we'll do better next week. All right. Amen. There's number three right there, right? Okay. Then it went jumped all the way back to the beginning, didn't it? All right, technical difficulties. Is this it right here? It's down here, isn't it? It's on this number three right here, isn't it? See, that's too small for you all to look at, isn't it? You can see it? Okay. So see here how God owns our Lord Jesus. Amen. This is my beloved son. Observe the relationship he stood in to him. He is my son. Jesus Christ is the son of God by eternal generation as he was the begotten of the father before all the worlds began. Amen. And by the supernatural conception, he was therefore called the son of God because he was conceived by the power of the Holy Ghost in Luke 135. Yet this is not all. He is the son of God by special designation to the work of the office of the world's redeemer. Amen. So not only is he the now the son of God and declared the son of God, he's also the redeemer. Amen. And how many of you know, whenever he gets touched and, and, and receives, he's got to fight the devil just like you and I. Amen. How many of you know that Jesus had to fight the devil too. Amen. Praise the Lord. So uh, he was sanctified and sealed and sent upon that errand, upon that errand, brought up with the Father for it, amen? And that's in Proverbs 8.30. Appointed to it, I will make 
him my firstborn, Psalms 89, 27. The affection the father had for him, he is my beloved son, his dear son, and the son of his love. He has lain in his bosom from all eternity. How many of you know in John 1 it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and nothing was made except it was made by him. Amen? Amen. So, but particularly as mediator and in undertaking the work of man's salvation, he was his beloved son. He is the elect in whom my soul delights. Amen? Because he, consec because he consecrated to the covenant of redemption and delighted to do that will of God, therefore the Father loved him. Amen? So the Father knew what the Son was going to do before the foundation of the world. How many of you know God has a plan? Uh, he has a plan for your life. Amen? How many of you are looking forward to his plan? Amen. Praise the Lord. Behold then, behold the wonder of what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us that we should be delivered up, that we should deliver up him that was the son of his love to suffer and die for those that were the generation of his wrath. Amen? Nay, and that he therefore loved him because he laid down his life for the sheep. Now know we that he loved us, seeing he has not withheld his son, his only begotten, his only son, his Isaac, whom he loved, but gave him to be a sacrifice for our sin. Amen. See here now, ready is he to own us in him. He is my beloved son, not only with whom, but in whom I am well pleased. He is pleased with all that are in him and are united to him in faith. Hitherto, God had been displeased with the children of men. But now his anger is turned away and he's, he had made us accepted in the beloved. Amen? Let all the world take notice that this is the peacemaker, the day's man who has laid his hand upon us both and that there is no coming of God as a, a coming to God as a father, but by the mediator. In other words, there's only one mediator between God and man, and that's the man, Jesus Christ. Amen? And that mediator is well-pleasing in the sight of God. Hallelujah. So you can't go to God any other way. You can't get to God any other way. He is only pleased in his son, Jesus, and he's only pleased in those who are in his son, Jesus. Amen? Anybody in Christ Jesus today? Hallelujah. How many of you are hid under the shadow of the Almighty? How many of you are dwelling in the secret place of the Most High God? Hallelujah. 1 Peter 2, 5. Out of Christ, God is a consuming fire, but in Christ, a reconciled Father. Amen. This is the sum of the whole gospel. It is a faithful saying and worthy of expectation that God has declared by a voice from heaven that Jesus Christ is is his beloved son in whom he is well pleased, with which we must by faith cheerfully concur. Amen? In other words, you gotta believe it. You gotta believe he's the son of God. Hallelujah. And you gotta believe that God is well pleased in him. And by faith, you gotta walk in that. Amen? How many of you uh, are, are, are realizing that that is where your strength comes from? Amen? you got to be careful today because there's so many things that you can get entangled with that choke the word. Amen? How many of you know some of the things we can get entangled with? What's going on today? Uh, COVID. We can get so carried away with COVID, we ain't even thinking about the power and the glory and the majesty of our God. Hallelujah. I'm more concerned about what's going on with COVID than I am uh, anything else. I want to tell everybody else how they ought to act and how they ought to behave and the way they ought to handle COVID. And if they don't do that, I'm on them. Hallelujah. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm not going to uh, uh, look to the heavens where my help comes from and love people. Hallelujah. I'm going to use something. I'm going to get a hold of something on the earth that's not God. Hallelujah. And I'm going to use it to my own uh, uh, so I can be exalted and I can be put somewhere where I can have power. Hallelujah. How many of you know it's all about power? How many of you know the devil wants power? 
Amen? The devil wants people to want power. Amen? And when people get afraid and full of fear and get full of anxiety and get full of, uh, you know, all the things that we're full of right now, hallelujah, and we're not remembering who our Savior is and who our God is and we're not walking in the freedom and the glory of our God, hallelujah. Yeah, wear a mask. It's okay to wear a mask. Wear two masks if you want to wear two masks, amen? But don't act like that you don't love somebody if they're not wearing a mask. Don't act like you don't love somebody because they ain't doing it the way you think they ought to do it. Let's remember where the cross is. Let's love one another the way God intends for us to love one. The devil wants to bring contention. The devil wants to bring strife. The devil wants to bring division. Hallelujah. And we need to remember who it is that we believe in and be persuaded that he's able to keep us against that day. And we need to love people. Hallelujah. Even if they kill us. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. But that's up to everyone else. Amen. As far as I'm concerned, I'm going to look to the author and finisher of my faith. Hallelujah. Sure, I'll wear masks and I'll put the masks on when I'm supposed to and, and do the best I can to cover myself and do the best I can to walk the way God intends for me to walk. But I'm not going to be afraid of it. Hallelujah. If I die, I die in the name of Jesus. If I get it, I get it in the name of Jesus. I'm not my own. I was bought and paid for by the blood of Jesus. There's not the one thing that can come on me that God doesn't allow to come on me. Hallelujah. COVID don't come on me because God didn't allow it. It comes on me because God allows it. Amen. I had it. Amen. Amen. I had it when it first came out. My wife and I had it when it first came out. God said, I'm going to let them have it. And I had it. Hallelujah. How many of you know that's the way it is? Praise God, but how many of you know that's not what my help comes from? My help don't come from whether I can handle COVID or not. My help comes from the Lord. If I die, I'm going to die for Jesus. How about you? Praise the Lord. Enough of that. We better move on. Hallelujah. How many of you know the devil wants the church entangled in things that cause men and women to be afraid and fearful and we don't get together and love one another like we should and we, and we lack that faith that we have together? How many of you know this room right now is filled with all kinds of gifts of the body of Christ? Amen. Each one of you possess things from God that I cannot get unless you're here. Hallelujah. I can't receive it unless you're here. You don't know what it means to have more people here when I'm teaching. Hallelujah. It means a lot in my spirit. Come on. I get something from you all whenever you all are involved in this. Amen. Hallelujah. Don't think that you're, it's not important for you to be in the house of God. It's important for you to be in the house of God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So anyway, uh, God has declared Jesus Christ, his beloved son, in whom he's well pleased with which we must by faith cheerfully concur and say that he is our beloved Savior in whom we are well pleased. How many of you are well pleased in Jesus? Amen. Amen. So now we're going to get into the temptation of Christ, the temptation of Jesus. Amen. So whenever he got baptized and he come up out of that water, amen, and God said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased, uh, what did God choose to do with him? He didn't go to Jerusalem. He didn't go to the finest places. There wasn't a whole group of people that praised him and said how great he was. What did the Spirit of God do to him? Whenever the Spirit of God got on Jesus, what was the first act of the Holy Spirit? The Drove him out into the wilderness. Hallelujah. So what, should we think it's a strange thing that we're going through trouble whenever we serve God? Hallelujah. Uh, Matthew 4, 1 through 11. Praise God. Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. Now, this is a little bit kinder version of it. Uh, many of the versions say he was driven into the wilderness. Amen. In other words, the Holy Spirit was anxiously desiring and willing for him to go. Hallelujah. How many of you know God wants us to get our place, uh, get ourselves in position where he can make us into something? How many of you know, and sometimes the only place he can make you into something is whenever you're in trouble. That's real popular teaching, ain't it? Hallelujah. 
How many of you know sometimes when you're going through the things you're going through in your life, that's what's making you into someone of character. That's what's making you into who God desires you to be. Amen. Hallelujah. Count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, knowing that the trying of your faith bringeth forth patience. And patience works endurance, and endurance works hope. And hope is not disappointed. Amen? I mean, you know, God's building us. He's making us. Amen? And so he had to build and make the man Jesus also. Hallelujah. We have here the story of a famous duel fought hand-to-hand -hand between Michael and the dragon, the seed of the woman and the seed of the servant. Nay, the serpent himself, in which the seed of the woman suffers, being tempted, and so has his heel bruised. But the serpent is quite baffled in his temptations, and so has his head broken, and our Lord Jesus comes off the conqueror. And so secures not only comfort, but conquest at last. Amen? To all his faithful followers concerning Christ's temptation, observe the time when it happened. Then there is an emphasis laid upon that immediately after the heavens were opened to him and the spirit descended on him and he was declared to be the son of God and the savior of the world. The next news we hear of him is that he is tempted for then is the best able to grapple with the temptation. Great privileges and special tokens of divine favor will not secure us from from being tempted. Amen. After great honors put upon us, we must expect something that is humbling. Hallelujah. In other words, you take a, you take a test step toward God and you're going to be tempted. Amen. You try to live for God and you're going to be tempted. How many of you have, have noticed that since you've been serving the Lord? Amen. Amen. You know, I'm, I'm a married man, love my wife, have a great relationship with my wife. The first time I preached, amen, uh, I... Uh, Come down after I preached, and it's toward the end of the service, and I walked into the hallway, and man, there was a woman in there, and she was liking me. You know what I mean? Hallelujah. And I mean, even know, I had to turn around and run the other direction. You know, I just started in this thing, just started having a relationship with God, just started, and they gave me the right to preach a little bit, and I preached a little bit right after I preached. There it is. Hey, Amen. How many of you know the devil knows how to get you? And you got to be careful. You got to know that the enemy is going to want to tempt you right after, hallelujah, you get great things from God. Amen? Amen. After great honors put upon us, we must expect something that is humbling. As Paul has a messenger of Satan sent to buffer him after he had been in the third heaven. Amen? Paul been uh, fly, floating with God. Hallelujah. And then... He had a thorn in the flesh. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. How many of you know there's always something there that keeps us in line with God? Amen? Always. 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 God is faithful to us. Yeah. And Paul has a messenger of saying sent to him to buffet him after he had been in the third heaven. God usually prepares his people for temptation before he calls them to it. Amen? He gives strength according to the day and before a sharp trial gives more than ordinary comfort. Amen. So in other words, he gives you what you need. The Bible says no temptation has come upon you, but such is common to man and God will make a way for you to escape. Amen. The assurance of sonship is the best preparative for the temptation. Hallelujah. So in other words, one of the greatest uh, uh, weapons we have against the enemy is the fact that I'm a child of God. Amen? How many of you are never giving up on that? How many of you know, uh, the enemy will tell us we are no longer accepted by Jesus. He'll tell us we've blown it. Amen? you got to not listen to the enemy because he's a liar. He never has spoken the truth. Amen? And he never will. Amen? You know, it was in the wilderness probably in the great wilderness of Sinai, of Sinai, where Moses and Elijah fasted 40 days. For no part of the wilderness of Judea was so abandoned to wild beasts as this is said to have been. Amen? When Christ was baptized, he did not go to Jerusalem to pu publish the glories that, he had been put, that had been put upon him, but he was driven into the wilderness. Amen? 
Jesus was directed to combat. He did not willfully thrust himself upon it, but he was driven of the spirit to be tempted of the devil. How many of you know, whenever Jesus lived here on the earth, there was a lot of things that he did that he did not want to do. Amen. Amen? It, it, it went all the way to the culmination of him being in the garden. And in the garden, he sweat as it was, drops of blood. Now, I know a lot of people say blood came out of his uh, sweat system. Uh, and that's not what happened. It, it, the way I see the interpretation of that is, is that he was trying so hard to fight against the enemy that his sweat was like drops of blood coming out of his forehead and out of his body. Amen. In other words, if you cut your wrist and saw the blood dropping down, that's how big his sweat was coming off of him. Amen. Uh, I know people want to make it fancy and act like blood came out of his system while he was fired. They can say that. I don't see that in the scriptures. Amen. It says like. It doesn't say it was blood. Amen. So, uh, but he, that was, he fought against the devil all the way to the end. Amen. He came to fulfill something that was a purpose and a plan by his God. And there was nothing going to stop him. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, as a matter of fact, when he was, what, 11 years old or something like that, he went into the temple and uh, his parents left him in the temple. And whenever they got back to him and his mother said, son, why have you done us this way? Didn't you know we'd be worried about you? Didn't you know we'd be wondering where you're at? And he said, didn't you know I need to be about my father's business? Hallelujah. So even at a young age, Jesus had given up his own life and he was not living for himself. He was living for the glory and the majesty of his father. Amen. Amen? Hallelujah. What a life to live. How many of you want to live that kind of life? Amen. Hey, not my own. Amen. How many of you, 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 whenever you lived your own life, you were miserable? I'm telling you, when I lived my own life, I was a miserable man. Amen. I hated everybody and everybody hated me except for my wife. My wife, for some reason, she loved me no matter what. Hallelujah. But everyone else hated me. No one wanted to be around me, and I didn't want to be around no one else. Amen. Hallelujah. You's around me, I'd be cussing you. Hallelujah. I'd be telling you, 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 you know, you wouldn't believe the kind of individual I was before Jesus came in and changed my life. Hallelujah. I used to cuss my wife every day whether she needed it or not. Amen. I used to cuss my father-in-law whether he needed it or not. Amen. I used to tell my kids, get out of here. Go in the other room. I ain't got time for you. Amen. Hallelujah. How many of you know only Jesus can change your heart? Yes. Only Jesus can make you new. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So Jesus was directed to combat. He, was, he did not willfully thrust himself upon it, but he was driven of the spirit to be tempted of the devil. The spirit that descended upon him like a dove made him meek and yet made him bold. Hallelujah. Our care must be not to enter into temptation, but if God, by his providence, orders us into the circumstance of temptation for our trial, we must not think it strange, but double our guard. Hallelujah. In other words, be strong in the Lord. Resist steadfast in faith and all shall be well. Hallelujah. The Bible says, uh, submit yourself therefore unto God, resist the devil, and he's got to flee from you. Amen. Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Amen. So when your temptation comes, and how many of you know it's going to come? You need to, you need to know who your God is and you need to stand on that. Amen. Hallelujah. Be strong in the Lord, resist steadfast in faith, and all shall be well. If we presume upon our own strength, we provoke God to leave us to ourselves. How many of you know it's not my strength? It's not my battle. How many of you know you can't fight on your own? How many of you have been noticing lately? If you try and make it on your own, you're really in trouble. Amen? Lately, I've noticed that I have no strength at all other than Jesus. Amen? He, he's my strength. He's my shield. He's my strong and mighty tower. He's my rock. He's my defense. Hallelujah. He's the, he's the glory and the lifter of my head. Amen. So without him, uh, he, without me acknowledging that and knowing that, he'll just let me flounder. Amen. Wheresoever God leads us, we may hope he will go along with us 
and bring us off more than conquerors. Amen. How many of you believe he ain't going to leave you? Jesus example of fasting after fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. Amen. How many of you have ever fasted uh, a long time? Okay. I've fasted four days before. Amen. Yeah, four days. Hallelujah. Now, uh, at the time I got uh, at the after the four days were up or in the uh, at the end of the four days, I was up in the bedrooms. I was praying and fasting. So I was up in the bedroom praying and I got scared because I thought Jesus was going to come uh, touch me. Amen. I thought he was right behind me. Hallelujah. And so I ended my fast because I was really not ready to see Jesus face to face. Hallelujah. Amen. But I went for four days. And let me tell you something. It does something in your spirit. It does something in your soul. Hallelujah to be fasting and praying. Amen. So after fasting 40 days and night, he was hungry. How many of you know the body becomes hungry? How many of you know our, our belly tries to tell us how to live? Amen. How many of you, your belly, boy, if you ain't got something to eat, you can be a grouch in, a sense, in, an, in an instant. Hallelujah. You know, the belly just leads you. It just guides you. Amen. Come on, give me my steak burger or else shut up. Hallelujah. Got to be careful not to let that belly lead you. Amen. Be careful not to let your belly be what decides your decisions. Amen. Hallelujah. So anyway, after the tempter came and said, after that, the tempter came and said to him, if you are the son of God. So what was the first thing the tempter said to him? And, and what was that contrary to what God had, God had just said to him something? You're my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Hallelujah. So now he says, if you are the son of God, hallelujah. I mean, you know what a stupid uh, uh, devil he is. Amen. I mean, he's clever and that's a clever thing. But I'm telling you, if you look at him for who he really is, that's stupid. Hallelujah. Because I'm the son of God, whether he likes it or not. And he can say if all day long. If is not in my code vocabulary concerning who I am in Christ Jesus. Amen? I don't have to prove who I am in Jesus. How about you? How many of you believe you stand in Jesus today, not because of who you are, but because of who he is? How many of you believe you have the right today to live for God fresh and new from this moment on? And there's nothing that the enemy can say to you. It's not if you're the son of God, you are the son of God. Amen. Hallelujah. We got to walk in that. Amen. I mean, you know, Jesus knew who he was. He knew who he was. And we got to know who we are. Amen. Amen. So the tempter came and said to him, if you are the son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. The devil is always busy trying to get us to yield to the flesh and to the belly. Men can be driven by their hunger and not by the word of God. Like Esau, who sold his birthright for a bowl of red beans. Amen. Hallelujah. Like Adam and Eve, who ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Uh, amen. In other words, she said, man, that looks good. I think I want to eat some of that. <laughs> Hallelujah. God said, you eat that, you're going to die. And she said, well, you know, I really don't want to listen to God. I'd rather listen to the serpent. Hallelujah. And how many know it was a serpent? It doesn't say it was a snake. Amen. amen. It was a serpent. Hallelujah. So everyone says it's a snake. I don't know. I, you know, it's hard for me to see it being a snake because it's the devil. Hallelujah. So if it was the devil, it was a serpent. He, the devil's a serpent. Hallelujah. And he made, and he appeared as a serpent in the, in the garden and he talked to the woman. Hallelujah. And the serpent was the one who received the punishment. So I can't see God uh, punishing a snake. Hallelujah. Amen. What was the serpent? A, a serpent. In other words, a serpent would be like what we see in our imagination as a serpent. Hallelujah. Some, uh, some horrid creature, you know what I mean? That, uh, that uh, whatever a serpent would look like, amen? It's a, a spiritual thing, amen? Because uh, the devil was not a human being. He was an angel. And angels can appear any way they want, you know what I mean? So I believe he became in that form as a, as a, uh, as a uh, uh, serpent, and appeared in the in the garden as a serpent and that it was the devil that was cursed and not the serpent hallelujah 
It was the curse was on the devil. The devil is crawling on his belly now. Amen. The devil is eating dust. The devil is the one whose head was crushed by say, by uh, uh, Jesus. Amen. So uh, it's just confusing to me to make it a snake. Hallelujah. Because snake didn't do anything wrong. You know, I can't see the snake doing anything wrong. Amen. Uh, the snake didn't have a, uh, a soul. The snake couldn't make good and, and bad decisions. You know what I mean? The, now, a serpent could if he was the, if he was the devil, amen, and he had appeared in the garden as a serpent, then he, you know, that's who could, uh, you could bring judgment on. You know what I mean? Can't talk. A snake can't talk. Well, they could back then. All the animals could talk back then, yeah. All the animals could, uh, they, uh, they could talk back and forth to Adam and Eve uh, before the fall of man. But, uh, you know, uh, it says serpent. And that's the, there, there are some uh, translations that say snake, amen. But serpent makes a lot more sense to me, praise the Lord. But it doesn't matter one way or the other. It is the devil that was cursed, amen. The devil was cursed because he convinced Adam and Eve to take of the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And because of that, his head is going to be crushed. And it was crushed on the cross of Calvary. Amen. I mean, you know, the devil lost on the cross. Hallelujah. Jesus did not say on the cross, I almost got it done, Kenny. I could do almost all of it, but I just can't do it enough for you. No. Jesus said, it is finished. He said, Mike. I did it all. I did it all. Hallelujah. Larry, I accomplished everything. Not one thing did I not accomplish. I got it all done. It's all finished. You have the right and the privilege now to become a son of God. And no one can take that away from you. Amen. You don't have to give that to no one. You can walk in that. You can breathe in that. You can do that because God is who he says he is. Amen. Hallelujah. And he destroyed the devil's power over us whenever he died on that cross of Calvary. Amen? Uh, he, he took the head off the, the, the serpent. Hallelujah? Amen. So uh, we're out of time. How many of you enjoyed today? Hallelujah. I'm so glad you made it to class. Give the Lord a big hand. Hallelujah? Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Father, I thank you so much for this class, your goodness, your mercy, your kindness. Everything that you're doing, Lord, thank you, Father. Bless them now.